Hello and welcome to this exclusive webinar on demystifying IDFC Balanced Advantage Fund. And to talk on this, I have with me a very special guest, Mr. Arpit Kapoor, Portfolio Manager, IDFC Asset Management. Mr. Kapoor, uh, welcome to the webinar. Thanks, thanks you too, and thanks for uh, giving us this opportunity to showcase IDFC Balance Advantage Fund. Our pleasure. Uh, I'll begin with uh, the reason behind uh, the gaining popularity of Balance Advantage Fund, and what is the advantage of uh, really investing in uh, through a Balance Advantage Fund? Sure, sure. So just to start with, a Balance Advantage Fund as a category invests across three asset classes. So basically, equity, debt, and arbitrage. So it gives you a flavor of three different asset classes uh, as compared to just a pure equity or a pure debt product. The other bit is that uh, predominantly most of the funds in this category uh, uh, helps you participate in the upside of the equity market. But what is more noteworthy is that they these funds help you protect or cushion the downside when the market corrects because they dynamic, dynamically allocate between equity, debt, and arbitrage. Uh, uh, a lot of these funds in the category help you cushion the downside. And so over a longer term, uh, the risk adjusted return of the funds in this category have really stood out in terms of uh, having far lower volatility and having far lower risk for every unit of return that you earn. So, uh, so over the last, uh, not just one year, I would say over the last five to seven years, uh, uh, this category has come on its own because it is suitable, not just only for the first time or conservative investors who are just entering the equity market, mm -hmm. but even for a seasoned professional or a seasoned bigger portfolios where you need some kind of a cushion, as I indicated. So let's say if there is a volatility, if there's a lot of volatility in the market, uh, this is the category of fund which provides cushion and which lowers the beta of your overall portfolio. Okay. So yeah, over, over the last three years or over the last five years, we have seen that uh, that is what has been appreciated by investors and by advisors in general. And that is why we have seen the AUM uh, in this category as a whole growing uh, quite rapidly as compared to the overall AUM. Mr. Kapoor, what is the basic difference between a balanced fund and a balanced advantage fund? All right. Uh, so a balanced fund or uh, uh, the new classification says an aggressive hybrid uh, fund has a fixed amount of equity at all points of time. Uh, so which has to be more than 65%. So it can be 70, 65, uh, set closer to 75 as well. So generally, uh, that category has a fixed allocation to the equity portfolio and the remaining is in debt. Whereas uh, uh, the balance advantage fund can move around in equity. So uh, based on different funds, uh, let's say I'll talk about IDFC DAF. Mm -hmm. We can move from 30% active equity all the way up to 100% active equity. Okay. So, so it's not fixed at a certain proportion. You can move around based on, let's say, whatever model uh, uh, a fund will has is following, and to that extent, it is a move around as far as the active equity is concerned. And to that extent, it gives to that a certain different flavor as compared to an aggressive hybrid, which has a fixed uh, percentage of equity. So flexibility is the main difference between the two. Yes, yes, yes. So can can you elaborate on how a fund captures the philosophy of buying low and selling high? Right. Uh, so uh, IDFC dynamic, uh, uh, IDFC balance advantage fund. Uh, so previously it was known as dynamic equity fund. So I'll uh, apologize in, uh, on the, from the start because uh, it's been four years that I've been managing this fund uh, and we've recently changed it to uh, the name to balance advantage fund. So uh, IDFC BAF, when we repositioned it in June 2017, uh, what we did was uh, we changed our model. So we have a, a underlying uh, model which uh, which follows the philosophy of buy low and sell high. So what we do is we take 12 month nifty trailing PE okay. and based on the value of that PE, we increase or decrease our active equity allocation. So when the trailing PE is high, uh, so let's say uh, right now, when the trailing PE is close to 30, uh, which is at an all time high, 
the current active equity allocation is close to 37 odd percent okay but when the trailing pe collapses so which was the case uh, not very far away in march 2020 when markets had corrected yeah. uh, the pe went below 16 and so the active equity allocation in the fund increased to 80% oh. so we moved from 80 to 35% let's say in a matter of 15 months but i'm just giving you a snapshot of how uh, we we live by it and uh, we are very very disciplined about it so is one of the funds where our model is uh, clearly disclosed so we are very transparent about what model we follow it is there in all our literature every month and we tell what is the trailing pe and to that extent what is the kind of active equity allocation you will have when you enter the product since you have been managing the fund for so long what is the kind of returns that have been generated for the investors in say last 5 to 10 years sure um, so again as i mentioned uh, i we repositioned the fund uh, four years back and uh, i would uh, again this category generally slightly more nuanced so i would look at a three year return and not just a one year return and on a three year return the average return that the fund has generated is 6.6% uh, as compared to 8% of nifty in the same time frame mm-hmm. so what we have been able to do is we have been able to capture almost 80% of nifty upside with just 50% of equity exposure and uh, the standard deviation is far lower as compared to what nifty returns uh, had of a three on a three year rolling basis so on a risk adjusted basis uh, uh, the value proposition is phenomenal uh, because you have been able to capture almost 80% of the upside of nifty now that the markets are at all time high what is your strategy uh, now you're looking at trailing pe what are you doing so yeah so uh, the market valuations have been inching up Uh, 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 over the last six to nine months, and there have been a couple of things. So, we are seeing uh, some bit of a earnings revival. Uh, so, there was a lot of pent up demand which hit in the markets uh, in the uh, second part of the last financial year, and so the recovery has been far more sharper as compared to what we had anticipated. And then we again saw, unfortunately, second wave of COVID, and to that extent there will be again some impact of earnings uh, per se again for the current financial year but yeah as you rightly said uh, uh, the trailing earnings continue to remain high and as i mentioned uh, uh, i am running uh, a close to 38% kind of an active equity portfolio so uh, our active equity exposure has come down from a high of 80% close to 37 38% because what we have seen is in the when the market hits an all time high and we've done this analysis uh, the last four time whenever markets uh, corrected by more than 10% uh, this fund was able to uh, uh, cushion the di- downside so our participation in the downside was limited to just 40 to 45% mm-hmm. so because we limited the downside uh, and we didn't participate fully in the downside we were able to uh, recoup a lot of lost performance because when the equities had run up because we were running lower equity mm-hmm. so yeah so as of now uh, uh, the active equity exposure is 38% and uh, as market continues to uh, touch uh, newer highs every day uh, we continue to reduce our equity exposure in line with what our model states mm-hmm. uh, leaving aside uh, this scheme what do you expect with the markets now at uh, all time high do you expect them <laughs> to <laughs> 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 that's a million dollar question uh, uh uh as to what the expectation from the market is but uh, i think there are two factors uh, one is the global macro and one is the domestic and uh, as far as the global macro is concerned there is a lot of concern about uh, uh the inflation and uh, linked with inflation is the us uh 10 years and linked to us 10 year rate is uh, the taper uh, tapering whenever we see that happening so those are uh, some of the global macros that have been that would continue to have a very very strong semblance on what happens to emerging markets and specifically to india in general because if i look at it in the last 12 months uh, we have seen very very strong fii flows in the market so other than march where uh, where march last year when the flows there was an outflow of 8 billion dollars every month 
uh, till March uh, last this year, uh, we have seen solid FII flows. So uh, that continues to remain a very very big uh, uh, talking point about how the Indian equity markets would do. On the local front, uh, again we are seeing the end of second wave, hopefully, and to that extent, uh, everyone is hoping for a uh, again a strong economic revival, similar to let's say what we saw in the first wave. The only uh, problem will be that uh, we are seeing a lot of raw material inflation, cost inflation because of commodity prices hitting all time high, and so to that extent, we may see some bit of a margin headwind going forward. and uh, what makes the job a lot more tougher is that last time when this happened uh, nifty valuations as i indicated was uh, below 16 times uh, as we are talking now nifty valuations are at 30 times so there is very little room of error uh, uh, for error uh, as far as the earnings is concerned so i guess uh, a lot of easy returns are off the table uh, we will we are entering into a phase where uh, we will see a lot more volatility entering the market and a lot more choppiness entering the market and in that construct uh, something like an uh, idfc baf uh, perfectly fits in because uh, we live by volatility so uh, whenever markets correct uh, uh, we will increase our equity exposure and whenever markets go up we will reduce our equity exposure that was my next question so it, is it the right time to really enter uh... Uh, the balanced advantage fund of idfc sure uh, so uh, i was doing some uh, uh, data trend search on google and what i found remarkable was that every time uh, the covid wave hit in india uh, the health insurance search uh, hit an all time high so that was in september october last year and so was it in case of uh, in in the current wave uh, in april may so uh, for a portfolio uh, uh, equity portfolio what we believe is that uh, given where valuations are and given the kind of uncertainty that uh, is there uh, there is a definite need for a product which can provide the investors the cushion so a lot of money uh, uh, a lot of investors are sitting at a lot of money right now as far as their equity portfolios are concerned so uh, rather than chasing the last 5% or the 10% uh, there is a very very great need to have some kind of a cushion in your portfolio so that if let's say markets correct tomorrow there is a cushion which helps your portfolio protect some of that downside some of that correction and which is the reason why we believe that idfc balanced advantage fund uh, stands out in that regard and uh, uh, given how our past historical experience has been in the four corrections that we have seen in the last four years of 10% each we have been successfully able to cushion uh, the negative uh, returns that the portfolio saw uh, by just falling less than half of what the markets fell uh, 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 i think opportunity for people to add uh, not just uh, conservative investors but investors across the spectrum uh, so even if you are an aggressive investor uh, because you would be sitting at a lot of gains in some of the high beta portfolio uh, this is one product which can help cushion the downside manage the beta of your portfolio and to that extent protect you from any downside if it comes in as well as help you participate in the upside so it's not like that we don't participate in the upside so i I'll just give one interesting statistic or data point that i have um, in the last one year uh, uh, from march uh, 30th when the market bottomed to uh, march 31st uh, 2021 uh, the markets were up uh, 105% we were up 55 so we participated almost 50% but i just go back uh, when the, the market's last time hit an all time high on 16th jan 2020 right uh, which is uh, when mark nifty touched 12355 and on 31st may uh, nifty was at 15600 odd levels which is a 26% return in that same period idfc daf delivered 17% return so we it's not like that we don't participate in the upside but uh, what we excel is also cushioning your downside if we talk about the covid period uh, what right. was the equity exposure at around say march 2020 levels and how did it increase uh, through the year and now where does it stand you said it's 30 38% now 
88 percent. Right. So uh, uh, in the Jan, as I mentioned, uh, we were at 50, 55 odd percent both in Jan and Feb 2020. and when market started correcting in march uh, uh, because uh, markets made a bottom around 7600 on 23rd of march by the end of march because nifty p had corrected below 16 uh, we increased our exposure to 80% okay and then every month as markets kept going up we kept reducing our active equity exposure so at the end of the march uh, let's say april we were sitting at 80% active equity by the end of april because markets had given a 10 15% run up we reduced our active equity from 75% plus to 65 to 75 so we were close to 70 and correspondingly as markets kept going up we kept uh, reducing our active equity over a period of time so as of now we are sitting at 38% what is the kind of returns one should really expect from this scheme uh, say if if say uh, somebody says uh, invested for uh, say next 3 years so again uh, it's a crystal ball question which uh, uh, i would not be at the liberty to answer because i would not be aware of it but what i can tell you is the last three year return which i highlighted that on a rolling basis in the last four years we calculated the three year rolling return the rolling return was 6.5% or 6.6% or as compared to 8% of nifty so yeah uh, given a uh, Where markets are, uh, we feel pretty confident that uh, we should be able to generate uh, this kind of a return going forward as well. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with your equity composition? What is the kind of um, you know um, uh, portfolio that you maintain for the equity, and do you reject it, uh, say quarterly or uh, biannually? Thanks, thanks you two for in- for the interesting question. I think I skipped this part. so uh, i run the active equity portfolio as a multi cap portfolio uh, so we have i i have uh, all three market caps so i have large mid and small because at various points of time uh, uh, a certain asset class becomes very attractive and so to that extent uh, uh, i wanted to ensure that we don't uh, uh, limit ourselves to sticking with one particular market cap segment so we have uh, exposure across market caps uh, again going by the fact that this is a hybrid fund uh, the the reliance on large cap or the the salience on large cap is slightly higher so we have a 70% plus kind of a large cap stocks and the remaining uh, 30% is mid to small cap uh, stocks that i have uh, as far as the stock selection is concerned so again uh, i have a both top down bottom up kind of a framework where uh, the quality of management and the quality of the earnings uh, as far as as well as the growth the earnings growth of a particular company or uh, those are the three corners to those are the two cornerstones uh, uh, which are the overlay of my equity stock selection philosophy so generally you will find uh, stocks which are which score very high on quality and on growth parameters part of the portfolio as far as the current structuring is concerned uh, i am running an overweight tech portfolio because i believe uh, because of covid there there has been so, such dislocation that digital is something which is going to be big even in years to come and also uh, market um, economies like us have recovered far faster and to that extent you sh- should see those tailwinds helping a lot of outsourcing uh, which will help the indian tech players so i am running an overweight tech portfolio right now with almost an equal weight financials Uh, and an underweight uh, uh, so i don't have any metal companies so i i've missed out on the all the metal returns but still uh, the fund portfolio has get delivered uh, returns uh, which are commensurate to uh, 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 what the market returns were one last question because the retail investors would be interested in knowing uh, do i have to do a one time investment only in balanced advantage fund or i can do an sip also sure so um, it is um, definitely for a one, for a one time investment this is a product to go because uh, it helps you uh, beat that kind of a volatility because uh, you don't know which way the markets can go and to that extent uh, here you are protected and uh, you can all you also participate in the upside so let's say if you put an x money today and if markets correct by 20% let's say in the next one month uh, it's not like that you are going to have 20% erosion in your overall Uh, money that you have put in uh, your 
your your your losses would get limited to the kind of active equity exposure that the portfolio will have so it is definitely a product uh, especially with valuations where they are uh, that a one time investor can put in or lump sum you can have it but what what i've seen is even in terms of sip the three year sip return is 13% so uh, uh, so even a sip return uh, on a three year or a one year basis is very very remarkable so uh, if it helps in one getting disciplined and uh, having an asset allocation or uh, auto rebalance on an uh, on an automatic basis uh, even a sip product uh, a sip is something which is good to do uh, for a product like this thank you mr kapoor for being with us it was pleasure speaking with you thank you so much mutual fund investments are subject to market risks read all scheme related documents carefully